Hi everybody, Penny here. Welcome to my kitchen. Um, today we are making cheeseburger pie. And um, I apologize for last week. Uh, about a little over a year ago, I injured um, the nerve in this arm and it never did fully, you know, go back to normal. And last week I ended up injuring it or re-injuring it again. So um, I couldn't do anything last week. Sorry about that, but I hope you enjoyed the repeat of the peanut butter poppers, which by the way, I also used as a pie crust uh, instead of the graham cracker crusts, and it worked perfectly. You can get one large nine inch pie crust, or and it would be fairly thick, or two, like not deep dish, but two regular um, pie pans with a little bit of a thinner crust. But it was wonderful. I did it with a chocolate um, and peanut butter, you know, no bake um, filling. It was excellent. So I hope you give that a go. And if you do, let me know how it turned out. So, like I said, today's cheeseburger pie. Um, I've done some of the work beforehand because of the arm, and I needed Barry's help. So what we have done, we've preheated the oven to 400 degrees, and I have a pie dish here. It's a little bit out of camera. This is a nine inch um, pie, deep dish pie dish, and we have two pounds of hamburger meat. This actually is a combination of hamburger and pork. Uh, you could use chicken, you could use whatever you like to make your hamburgers out of, that's what you can use. So in there, we also have two onions, and they're all cooked up together. I put in three cloves of garlic. If you don't like garlic, you can certainly leave it out. Bit of salt and pepper, a couple of tablespoons of Worcester sauce, and it all fries up nice and brown. And I also put in about a tablespoon of oregano. Um, that again is optional, but that is something that I do like to put in my homemade hamburger patties. So that's all in a dish. And when it cooled a little bit, it's still a little bit warm, I put in um, about a half a cup, three quarters of a cup of shredded cheese because it's a cheeseburger pie. And I still have another cup and a little bit in the container. Um, and I mixed that all in. So there's a little bit of cheese in with the meat mixture as well. So now we're going to make the bun part of the cheeseburger pie. And the original recipe called for Bisquick. Well, I didn't want to buy a box of Bisquick because I don't normally use it um, just for one cup. So I Googled and here is homemade Bisquick. So you have one cup of flour, which we have here, and then you have one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, which we'll do here, and I'll get the half of one. There we go. And then you have a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. There we go. And you have about one tablespoon of butter so or you can use shortening totally up to you so it's about the size of an egg a small egg is around a tablespoon of butter it doesn't have to be precise so now we're just going to fork with a fork we're going to make that all crumbly into the flour mixture and there you have homemade bisquick so you can double it triple it um, you can easily, because butter freezes well, flour freezes well, you could easily make um, a big bowl and then keep it in the freezer. It won't freeze solid. Um, and then just take out a cup or whatever, whenever you need it. And that's it. That's Bisquick. It's all good. In many ways, it's like self-rising flour. Except for self-rising flour, it wouldn't have the butter already incorporated in. There we go. That's a little bit of butter all mashed into the flour to make like breadcrumbs. Okie dokie. So that's our one cup of Bisquick. Now we're going to add to that one package of beef oxo, or if you have, um, if you're using chicken or turkey, you could put in chicken oxo. That's just to beef up the flavor. Oh, pardon the pun. Beef up the flavor a little bit. There we go. Mix that in there. And now we'll lay this aside and we will get into the rest of it. So now we have one and a half cups of milk and we're going to add to this three eggs. And whisk that up. Put 
There we go. Let me grab a towel. That's done. And we'll just whisk that up in the milk. get to the sides to get all that in there. Hey, Caitlin. I'm making cheeseburger pie for supper and for the video. Um, when it comes time to put the cheese on top, you can do that, okay? Okay, so our bisquick is all made, and we're going to slowly pour that on top of our ground beef. Boom. So you may have to encourage the batter okay. to go down into the meat a little bit. There we go. And I'm just gonna put this here. Sorry, I have to put the bowl back on. And we're just gonna encourage it to go down in with the meat. And I'm making a mess already. I was wondering that. I said to Barry, is all they going to fit in that pie pan? And we both went, yes. But maybe we were wrong. <laughs> okay. So if you have a casserole dish or a bigger pie pan than what I have, that would probably be better. But that's all good. Okay, so we're just going to leave that little bit of batter there. That's all right. So, like I said, the oven is preheated to 400 degrees. I'm going to put this on a cookie sheet because it's really, really full. Um, and we're going to bake it for uh, about 25 minutes. Then we're going to take it out and we're going to sprinkle it with cheese and put it back in the oven for about between 5 and 10 minutes till the cheese is nice and golden and bubbly. And that's also the point where you could add uh, chopped tomatoes, chopped pickles, um, you could also do the, um, uh, oh, bacon. You could put bacon there. Um, so put half the cheese down and then put all that other toppings and then the rest of the cheese. Put it back in the oven, um, for about, you know, like I said, five, ten minutes till it's nice and golden and bubbly. And then you have cheeseburger pie for supper. So we'll be back. Hi everybody, back again. So the cheeseburger pie is ready. And um, it's still too hot to cut. We just took it out of the oven, but it's nice and golden brown. All the cheese is all melted. And I tested the middle with a toothpick like you would with a cake and it came out clean. So it's all good. A little too hot to eat just yet, but I'll remind you what was in it. So we had two pounds of ground beef, two onions, um, about a tablespoon or so of Worcester sauce, salt and pepper, and uh, that was, oh, that was it for that part. That's pre-cooked in a frying pan, browned off. Then you put that in your casserole dish or your pie plate. And um, when it cools off a little bit, add about a half a cup to a cup of cheese, whatever cheese you would normally um, use on your hamburgers, except for like the Kraft sliced cheese, because that wouldn't work. But if you prefer feta cheese or mozzarella or whatever, you go ahead and use whatever cheese you like. And then once that's mixed into the, the meat, then you mix up the batter, which is one cup of flour, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and one tablespoon of butter. So with a fork, you just mash the butter in until it's nice and crumbly. And then in a separate bowl is one and a half cups of milk, three eggs, whisk that together, and then uh, one package of beef oxo or chicken oxo, depending on what meat you're using for your cheeseburger. Um, mix all that in, 
pour it slowly over the meat mixture. And you might have to get a fork or a spoon to make room for the, the batter <laughs> uh, to go all through the pie. Uh, put it in the oven at 400 for 25 minutes. Take it out, sprinkle it with the rest of your cheese, which is about a cup, cup and a half, and then put it back in for five to 10 minutes. We did a full 10 minutes. And ta-da, you have cheeseburger pie. Serve that with a lettuce and tomato salad, and uh, you have all the toppings you want. So I hope you give it a go. Let me know if you do. Bye, enjoy.